All right, hey, welcome back. We are going to actually connect to our database in this time. Um, for those of you who are just checking us out, we are talking about the SQLize ORM with Node.js. My name is Kyle. All right, so in our last video, we set up all the different configuration that we need, and we're exporting this specific um, object that we call. So in this environment, we're going to export the dev object. When we actually move to production, we would want to export a production environment um, configuration. So hopefully you have a different uh, development database than you do a production database. To connect to the database, we're going to go to our models file. Where is it? Models directory, sorry and into the index.js file. And we're going to change some things around in here. So first, you can see that we're doing things a little bit differently than SQLize recommends doing. Uh, config is no longer going to be this. Instead, we're going to get rid of this. Actually, hold on. You know what? Let's just get rid of this completely. Goodbye. OK, so config is actually going to be equal to something else. We're going to say const config equals, okay, and then we're going to say require, and you don't really need to do dir name. You could do dir name, but you don't need to do dir name. Instead, we'll just say dot dot, uh, let's see here, string dot dot up, and that takes us into, all right, so config and config. So that is going to give us this object that we're exporting here. And the next thing we can get rid of is this. So here you can see that they're kind of using this process env node development thing too. We already did that. We don't need to do that. Uh, and then we are good to go. Now, uh, down here, we are going to get rid of this. I don't do it this way. Actually, hold on. Let's get rid of this and then get rid of this. I don't use environment variables, and I've actually come across a couple of databases that won't let you use them. So even if you know how to set them up, they, will, they won't let you use an environment variable. So we'll just do this, um, and we don't need to do this anymore. So const sqlize. And we want to say config well actually let's look at the documentation on this so you can see where to find that so if we look at the documentation in basic usage I think it's basic usage okay so we see that this is how it recommends connecting and there are different things that we can give to it so we're going to use this one okay and um actually sorry not this one well yeah we're going to use this one but we're not going to use this port so we need our database our username our password and then an object so we'll go back in and we're going to say get rid of all of this first we need our database so we have config dot db dot database Next, we need our username, which is config.db.username. Password is config.db.password. And then we're going to pass it an object. Okay. Indent with four, not two. <clears throat> so here we're going to put dialect. And we want to save my SQL. And then we're going to write host, and we're going to say config.db.host. Okay, and then that's all going to be good. There is one more thing I want to put down here. So if we go into the uh, documentation, we should see, let's see here where they put it. It might be in getting started. We want to run something that kind of lets us know that we've actually done what we need to do. So setting up connection. We want to use this. 
So we'll run sqlize.authenticate, and then it'll tell us whether or not we actually succeeded. This will save your life because you need, if, it, if there is an error, it's going to be so important that you actually see that error. So we'll just paste this in here. One final thing, please, for the love of God, do this because it will save you so much time in the future. Council.log config. So log out what this config variable actually is because just trust me, it will save you time in the future. I can't tell you on what yet because it help, it has helped me so many times, but somewhere down the line, you're going to think there's a different variable in this configuration value than actually is, and this will save your life. So this is the one time I do actually recommend counseling out config. All right, so we should be good to go. Guess what you have to try and do now? We're going to connect to the database. So we have the database already running in Examp, and we go into our package.json file. We set this up. So the question is, how do I actually connect to the database, right? What do I do? <clears throat> so let's look at the documentation for this. OK. So let's see here. This is setting up the connection. Yes. But, and that's testing out the connection. That's great. OK. So we have a sync function. And ignore this user. Um, but we have a sync function here. And the sync function basically will connect to the database and then it will sync all of your models with the database. And we really want this to run every time the server starts so that if you have added any models, it's going to be able to add them. Now, the one thing I do not recommend is this force variable. There are certain times where you do want to use force. And what this will do is it will drop any of the tables that already exist. So basically, this is for when you know you're going to be creating tables over and over and over again. The information inside them does not matter. And you just need to check if creating them is possible or if they have the right names or something. So you want to delete them every time the server restarts. <clears throat> and then you might ask, well, where do we call sync? Let's go into our files and we'll go into www.js and find where it says this. So var port equals normalize port app.set port. And oop, not that, sorry, that's talking about the port. But find where it says server.listen. Okay? And we're going to basically cut all of this out. So cut it out. And then we're going to require our database in here. So let's say, let's say const db equals require. And then we're going to put a string in here. We're going to say models. Where am I? Oop, up one. And then models. OK. And then we're going to say db dot sync. I think it's db dot sync. Let me check. One second. OK, it is not db.sync. I apologize. It's db.sqlize.sync. And this is, a, um, this is a promise. Remember that anytime you're connecting back and forth with the database, it's not happening automatically. <laughs> There's, it's going to take a second to do this. So then right underneath this, we're going to do dot then. And we don't want to do anything like a wait. We don't, we don't want to try and hold it off. We can just let it run and return whenever it needs. Then we're going to run an anonymous function. And inside of here is where you're going to paste that server.listen, server.onerror, server 
that on listening. And actually, you know what? I actually don't like that. Let's not put those in there. We'll put those underneath. <laughs> um, and then, of course, let's add a catch. So E and then where is this? Council.log E because I want to do something with that error. Um, but that's really all I want to do with it. Otherwise, we're just going to listen on that specific port. So this is what actually connects to the database. I'm actually going to add that here too, just in case someone sees it later on. Connect to database. All right. Now here's the big moment of it all. Something is going to go wrong. I did something wrong. I always do something wrong in the setup. Um, but we'll find out what I did wrong and we will fix it. So we will run npm run debug. Okay, that's going to start up. Here's the really cool part about using that break function is it breaks before this. Now, if you actually go into your files right now, the only thing that's going to exist is www because that's the only file that's been invoked. But here's a little trick. If you go into file system and you add this folder to your workspace, then you will have access to all of those different things. And you can put little breakpoints in there. So first, let's go into the config folder. Okay. And we are going to put a breakpoint right here. Then let's go into the models folder and index and put a breakpoint right here and hit play. Okay, so something either went wrong or something went right. All right, so we see in our index in our models folder, we are requiring in the config folder up here. So that will require in config. I am going to tell you right now, it is best and we'll do it right after this to require this configuration folder somewhere else than besides this models folder. And that's because you really don't want this to be the only thing that actually requires in your configuration. It's not really great to do that. Secondly, <clears throat> nope, that's it. I didn't have a second point. All right, so let's see what config looks like. Well, we see our username is root, our password is empty, our database is my own tutor, our host is localhost, and our node env is env, right? Or not env, dev. So when we get down to here, well, actually, we'll just let that run. So when we let this run and we look in our index file, we now see a config object with no properties. Well, isn't that just interesting? It is an empty object. This is why. Okay, const config module dot export export. Okay, someone probably already seen the error and has been screaming at me for like 10 minutes through each video. Uh, if we go into config.js, there is no such thing as module.export. It should be module.exports. So go ahead and save that. This will rerun. Hit play. Wait for it to get here. All right, config now equals an object. Okay, so now we see we have this DB object, database, my own tutor, host, local host, password, and username. And if you look at these different things, my own tutor, root, nothing, and localhost. So let's pray here. That's always a good thing. I'm going to do this like this and hit play. All right, we got an error. Like I said, I did something wrong. I just don't know what it is yet. So let's see here, unrecognized data type for attribute this dot name. Okay, so then we will navigate to our first model, which is users, because it's saying that something is wrong with the user, unrecognized data type for this. No, that's not it. What is it saying? Let's see here. Throw new error, unrecognized data type for attribute. 
this.name.name user.updated at. Okay. This is interesting. So it doesn't like updated at. Unrecognized date time. Oh, okay, there it is. Date, not date time. That's what I get for using autocomplete. This should be date. All right, we'll go ahead, save. That's the wrong one. This will restart itself. We'll hit play. Let that run. All right, and it connected. Yay. All right, so we can see here that it ran something. Create table if not exists users. So this is really good. One, we see that the connection was established successfully. That's good. But two, um, we see that it ran some SQL. And we definitely want to see it run this SQL uh, because this is where you're going to do a lot of your own debugging um, when you see like what values is it actually running when it inserts something or when it updates a table, what is it actually doing and yada, yada, yada. So this is good. Let's look at this. So we'll go into MySQL Workbench, hit refresh right here because we're actually going to have a table now. And we see that we have a users table. So like I said, this will pluralize things for you. Um, I know there's a way to actually prevent this in the same way that we wrote underscored and paranoid here. There is a way to prevent it from pluralizing things, but I actually like that it pluralizes things. So I'm going to leave it be. And if we see users, so we click on users, we can see the different columns in user. And we see that we have a first name, a last name, username, password, email, updated at, deleted at, and this is the thing that I told you it's going to create on its own, created at. Okay, so we can select the rows, and we will see the different values here. All right, we're good to go. We've connected to our database successfully. Uh, the next thing I'll probably do is create a bunch of different models. Um, you can probably skip over that video if you don't really care about creating models uh, because it's kind of a tedious and boring thing to do. In all honesty, it looks very similar to this. Um, and then after that, we will get started on writing some different routes and seeing how we can extract uh, values and update values and all that good stuff. And I'll see you then. Bye.